Hi there, greetings from Flanders, the northern region of Belgium. Right now, I'm in the westernmost corner of our region. We call this part of Flanders the West Hook, but you might know it better under the name Flanders Fields. Hi, Valerie. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Welcome in Popring. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. And I must admit, this is my very first visit to Popringa ever. I know, of course, about Talbot House and Leisendhoek, the biggest hospital cemetery in the Ypres salient. But apart from that, Popringa and the region is still a blank spot to me. So have you prepared some classical sightseeing? No, not classical sightseeing at all. I've never seen um, beer and cycling experience Wow, here. beer and cycling. <laughs> that sounds challenging. Wow. Tournée locale. Yes. And we are here. We are. Yes, indeed, in Popring, the capital of the hops in our region, but actually in the whole of Belgium, because 95% of the hops are cultivated over here. And that's why there's so many uh, breweries also around Popringa. Yes, and that's why we realized the cycling routes. Uh -huh. They connect different breweries, points of interest in the region. So four routes, what's the difference? How do they vary? They vary from a distance of from 32 kilometers to 46 kilometers. And as far as practical information, you can run bikes individually or in group. We've first seen one for you. Wow. Yes. Uh, next to that, I have an interesting guide for you, yeah. which shows you the way. We have it in Dutch, in English and in French. Pocket size. Pocket size, <laughs> very handy. And you can, uh, you can also find it online and it can be downloaded. Yeah. So there's four routes, but which one is your favorite? Well, it's always difficult to choose, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, I prefer the one of 32 kilometers, which starts in the heart of Popring, goes to the beer village of Watu, and um, connects all the way also the brewery of St. Sixes, the Trappist brewery, which is- later, The holy grail of beer. In, yes, indeed. And um, that route goes along the Brewery of St. Bernardus, which has a brand new rooftop bar. This is really a must-see uh, when you visit Flanders Field. Well, I think it's decided. I'm going to try out your favorite route and check out St. Bernardus Brewery. But before I take off, I guess the museum also deserves some attention. Of course, what can of I see course. Inside? It's the heart of the region. It's, uh, it tells you the history and the whole story of the cultivation of the hops. Luke is waiting for you and will give you all the explanation you need. Okay, this is wonderful. I don't know how the beer and the cycling are going to combine, <laughs> but I'll do my best to make it a smashing day. Nevertheless, have fun. Bye. Luke, pleased to meet you. Hello, welcome in Popperinge, Flanders Hop Metropolis. Welcome in our museum on hops and beers. Luc, can you tell us why hops are being cultivated in Popperinge and not in other parts of Flanders? There are actually two reasons. First of all, we have to go back, way back in time, the history of Popperinge in the Middle Ages, when Popperinge, alongside with Ghent and Ypres and Bruges, they were the four main linen and cloth producing towns in the county of Flanders. However, our neighbor, weaving town of Ypres, could not cope with the fact that a small place like Poppering was exporting its top quality produce into the four corners of the world, so hence there were regularly conflicts, clashes between the two towns. It escalated and finally the two towns concerned said, well, we cannot go on like this. Let us go to the wise man, the Count of Flanders, and ask the wise man to take a wise decision. In 1364, he said, well, Sorry, Popperinge, but within three hours walking distance around Ypres, there shall be no more weaving. And our people had to look for another source eh, to put the daily bread on the table. We simply switched over to the hop culture. That's the historic reason. Okay. Second reason is the nature of our soil. We have a soil that consists of a permeable sand and loam layer, because with the rains, eh, it's pretty important that the water can sink through. But underneath that permeable layer, there's an impermeable thick layer of clay. So the groundwater is retained and it gives the soil an excellent pH value suitable to grow hops. 
Hops are used mainly in the brewing industry, of course, but the, botanically speaking, the hop plant belongs to the hemp kind. So, hence, if you have trouble falling asleep, eh, people say, used to say, well, put some dry hop cones eh, in a piece of cloth under your pillow. Nowadays, the pharmaceutical industry produces all kinds of remedies to give you or to guarantee you a good night's sleep. On the other hand, for example, the young plant, when it starts to grow by the turn of the year, there's the uh, shoots and those hop shoots are harvested and served uh, as a delicacy. Before the building has been turned into a museum, I presume this was a production unit. Uh, what happened on which floor? Well, it was actually the place where, until the late 50s, hops were delivered, inspected, weighed, pressed in big bags and stored over the different floors before being delivered on the brewery. Ever since it became a museum, the attic introduces the visitor into uh, what are hops and why hops in poppering it. Then we have the floor, the second floor here, where we visualize the different activities, the different stages of activities according to the four seasons. And then on the ground floor, we show people actually what happened here, but I'll show you on the ground floor. Okay. This is actually the place where it all happened. This is where hops were delivered, were inspected, were weighed, and pressed into big bags before being delivered to the brewery. Look, can you tell us what is the importance of hops for uh, tourism in Poperinge today? Well, hops do not only inspire names for local pubs and local restaurants, but also it inspires cycling activities and our triennial hop and beer festival, which is quite nice and quite colorful and whirling because, I mean, to uh, set up a parade with about 1500 characters, 10 floats, music bands, etc. on a, a team so unique, so special as Hops, must be called a creative tour de force. Well, now that we've visited the museum, um, is there any farms that we could uh, go and have a well, look? Well, stop by at the Hoppercruid in Proven because the farmer takes care of the hop garden but the wife has some musical talents. Oh wow, that uh, sounds intriguing. Thank you very much for showing us around in the museum and uh, I will surely go and check out your suggestion. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, take Bye. care. Now that we know why this region grows hops, it's time to embark on our beer and cycling adventure. And my first stop will be the hops farm of the singing farmer. Benedict, Hello. pleased to meet you. Thank you for uh, hosting us on your farm. Of course. I've heard it's a busy time for you. We have a lot of, of work now in the hop plantations. Uh -huh. If you want to see it, yes, of course. Show it. Yes, of course. Okay. So, Pedro, uh, those are our hop fields, and uh, as you see, we have already a lot of work to do. <laughs> Uh, we have to cut off the rest of the plants uh, yeah. from uh, the last year. So in February we start with um, the harvest of the hop shoots. Uh, and especially for Valentine's Day we have a lot of demand of hop shoots because a hop shoot is an aphrodisiac. <laughs> Are they? Of course. <laughs> well that's then a perfect timing for those shoots to yeah, come out. <laughs> of course. We will taste them later on. Okay. Um, the shoots are not growing outside, they're growing inside. In the ground, in, in the, the ground. roots, oh. in the roots of the plants. Ah, here, on the field? Yeah, yeah on, ah, the field, okay. on the field. Yeah. Yeah. So we have two harvests uh -huh. of our um, plants. We have the shoots in uh, February, March, but we have also the hop flowers in uh, September. And so in other countries they only use the flowers and yes. don't do anything with the yeah. shoots? Yeah. Uh -huh. So at the end of June, beginning of July, 
it's all green here. You don't see any poles anymore. So in springtime, visitors to the region who do a cycling trip here, yeah. uh, it must be beautiful to see all these flowers. Yes. No, the flowers are blossoming when? The flowers when? are coming in August. August, so later, later in the season. On, yeah. so, but in, in springtime you see the, flower, the plants growing and then yeah. by summer you see everything blossoming. Yes. It must be beautiful. It's very beautiful and smells also very good in September. Yeah. Very yeah. aromatic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Have a seat. Thank you. Wow, look at this chandelier with the hop flowers. Yeah. So, as I promised to you, uh, we can have a tasting of hop shoots. Let's take some. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, I told you, uh, hop shoots are an aphrodisiac. I don't say anything, Pedro, when you look to a hop shoot, because of the shape? Yes, <laughs> and that's the reason the male why we say it's uh, aphrodisiac. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay? But it's not proven that it actually... No. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> okay. Have a nice day. Yes, okay. thank you. It's very crispy. Yes. Yeah. There's a little bitterness to it. Yeah. We say it's uh, the taste of uh, a nut. Of a nut, yeah. yeah. I guess you also have a few favorite dishes uh, to prepare with these hop shoots. Can you give mm -hmm. us some examples? Yeah. I prefer fresh uh, salmon with raw uh, hop shoots on top and uh, chives, uh -huh. pepper and salt also. Yeah. So like, like a salad, like a... Of course. Yeah. Now, there's one intriguing detail I would like to ask you about. Okay. You've, before I came here, mm -hmm. when I left at the Hops Museum, mm -hmm. you've been referred to as the singing farmer. Oh, is that yeah, true? That's true. So <laughs> where does the singing come in? I sing a lot. Do you sing to help the uh, plants crop? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Under the shower? <laughs> no, no. When uh, we have visits uh, here on our farm, uh, I always end the visit with uh, some songs wow. um, and um, the songs um, refer to the, the harvest of the hops. So these are these kind of typical yeah. folkloristic songs? Of course, yeah, yeah. in Old Flemish. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Would you like to bring us a song? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you help to sing with me? I will Can do you? my best. Um, the is this is the on text? the wall. Uh -huh. Van te land van Popperinge en van de Look all together, Peter. Als we de schoenen tassen om naar de pluk te gaan en staan met de bazassen op onze rug geslaan, dan jaagt van aan doen engen ons hartje naar het geluk, naar het land van popperingen en van de nacht. Thank you. <laughs>
So you can see oh, the this new. Is hot. Yeah, that's that's hot. Watch out. And in these rooms, we produce 45,000 hectoliters beer per year, and we export that beers to 75 countries throughout the world. Wow. And uh, those 45,000 hectoliters, you can compare it to uh, approximately 13 million bottles of 33 centimeters. Wow. Well, uh, this feels like getting a taste for the final products. Yeah. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Let's grab a heavenly nectar in our rooftop bar. We head back? Yeah. Let's go. So Peter, these are uh, all the beers uh, St. Bernardus produces. So we have nine beers, that's correct. Uh, you can see the Pater Zest, the Prior 8 and the Ab 12. These are uh, beers that we inherited from the, the license period with the monks of West Vleteren. And then afterwards uh, we developed our own range of beers, uh, for example uh, the St. Bernardus Triple, um, the St. Bernardus Wet. We also developed uh, the Watu Triple. This one is a surprise to me, high fermentation beer in a can. This is not quite common for, for Belgium. No, that's not quite common for Belgium. A lot of countries, a lot of breweries from abroad do make uh, fermentation beer in, in a can. This is a, a way to appeal to new audiences. Yeah. In which order should I drink these beers? <laughs> I think you should make your own decision about that, uh, depending on the, the, the season. Is it, is it winter? Is it spring? Uh, which kind of beers do you like? Do you like a, a dark brown beer or you prefer a, a more blonde uh, beer? I think I'm more of a brown beer lover. Which one should I try then? Well, that Ab 12 is the crown jewel of St. Bernardus, so uh, I'll pour you with Ab 12 if, that, if that's okay. Yes, please. Or you can do yeah. it by yourself if you want. I will try, I will yeah. try. Here you go. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of St. Bernardus? It wasn't always a brewery. In fact, uh, you're sitting in a good position right now uh, to tell a bit about the history, because uh, uh, if you turn around, you can see uh, the farm there, and that farm is called Patershof or uh, Kortuele. And that was the establishment that the Trappist monks of Mondeca, they uh, came to live there in the early 20th century to escape France because they had to pay taxes on the things that we were selling or doing at, at, that, at that moment. They lived there until 1934. So they uh, made cheese in that farm under the, under the name Saint Bernard de Watou. And they sold their cheese making activities to, uh, to a guy called Evariste de Koning. Uh, and he um, started making cheese at this facility in 1934. And uh, he was good friends with the abbot of West Vleteren. Uh, he played cards together, just as we do right now. So we, we cheers in the yeah. meantime. <laughs> we, yeah, cheers. cheers. To the abbot of West Vleteren was in search of a, a partner to brew and commercialize beers for them. And uh, in fact, so uh, in 1943, the Evariste Koning started brewing beer together with uh, the brewmaster of West Vleteren, Mathieu Zafranski, at this facility. Yeah. And uh, we kept on brewing those beers for West Vleteren until uh, 1992. Yeah. Super. Well, I wish to thank you for, for your time showing us around. This is indeed a beautiful apotheosis of an uh, intensive but very interesting day. Let's bring a toast to a great visit. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, what an eventful day. We started off early this morning in Poperinge at the Hops Museum where we learned all about the history of hops. Then we visited a hops farm where we saw what they are doing in practice. And now we finished at the brewery and this is only one of a dozen. This is what cycling and beer or beer and cycling is about. You enjoy this beautiful region, you cycle along the landscapes, you see the hops fields, you make a stop at a farm or a brewery, you enjoy a good Belgian beer and then you hop on your bike and you continue. And I hope you will try that yourself one day. Enjoy. Bye.